Another type of popular models are uh, lattice models. In chemistry in the fourth field, we have freely moving atoms or molecules. Here we have a predefined lattice of certain structure, and we have a variable usually called spin at every lattice uh, site. The most popular model is the so called Ising model. Uh, Mr. Ising was a German, so I believe it's uh, more appropriate to pronounce uh, his name as Ising, not Ising, as you can hear from English speaking people. And this model can be interpreted in different ways. In its original uh, interpretation, it's a model of a ferromagnet. We have a lattice here in two dimensions. It can be, of course, studied also in three dimensions. And we have two types of spins at every side, plus and minus, or up and down, as you wish. And the inter interaction energy, sometimes also called Hamiltonian, is a sum of all uh, nearest neighbors. That is, uh, this plus uh, has four neighbors in uh, these two dim dimensional lattice. And we simply multiply the, the values here. That is, if the spin is interpreted as a minus one and plus one, we have plus or minus one here. That is, it's uh, energetically favorable uh, if this interaction constant uh, is uh, negative like this, if they are uh, unlike spins. Uh, sorry, if they are the like spins together. So this has a positive energy and this has the n a negative energy. In addition uh, to this uh, mutual interaction of spins, which uh, sort of mimics the real interaction in a ferromagnet, the reason for this real interaction in iron, for example, are based on quantum chemistry. We can also have the external uh, magnetic uh, field which uh, then act, uh, acts to the individual spin just multiplied by the field intensity. Usually we study the ferromagnet. In uh, two dimensions we even know uh, the, uh, the, uh, the position of the critical point which is a uh, also called the Curie point. Uh, iron or nickel is paramagnetic above uh, the, the Curie point, a ferromagnetic below it. I will show you simulation shortly. Uh, we know it analytically in 2D. In 3D it's not known analytically, but uh, there are very accurate uh, values obtained by simulations and other theoretical works. The same model can be reinterpreted as the so-called lattice gas. It is the simplest model of gas and a condensed phase. We cannot distinguish liquid and solid here. Uh, the formula for the interaction energy is pretty similar. However, uh, we have the lattice variable only 0 or 1. Zero means that we don't have a molecule there, and, and one means that we have one molecule there. Because we can have uh, at the most one molecule at the site, th this term is responsible for the repulsion, and this term is responsible for the attraction of neighboring atoms. And we have a second term which uh, contains the total number of atoms and the chemical potential. These two models are equivalent. Only uh, the variables must be recalculated. And the third interpretation of the Ising model is a binary alloy. You know that there are binary alloys where the both uh, atoms both metals are very similar, so that they make such an uh, such a mixture. It, this mixture generally isn't ideal. Uh, it can be, of course, but if it's not, we must consider 
deviation from the ideal behavior and we have such an interaction energy. Similarly, we have the chemical potentials here. We have two types of atoms and uh, there are certain interactions of uh, the types here and again we can uh, elaborate a transformation from the Ithink model, the original one, to this type and or to all these numbers. Okay, so let's simulate the Ithink model here is a low temperature system which is composed uh, is a ferromagnet that is all spins are aligned to one direction called blue here and the yellow ones are the opposite and we have a, uh, essentially the symmetric case here uh, I can flip uh, the spins here yeah, okay, I can flip it only a small part, doesn't matter. So, this is one of two possible symmetric phases. The other one is uh, a yellow one with uh, blue dots in it. Let's increase temperature. Here at the upper top corner, we can see the ratio to the critical, the critical temperature. So, if we increase temperature, we can see that the phase qualitatively doesn't change but we have uh, more and more perturbations. If we are 10% below the critical temperature, these clusters can be pretty large, but uh, still they appear and then they uh, disappear again. And this is the cr cr critical temperature. Everything here is quite slow, the simulation is slow, but after a very long time we arrive at something that you can see here at the right hand side of the screen that is the system doesn't know whether uh, to be in one of the two phases or the other it is somewhere in between and the fluctuations are very large if we increase the temperature even more uh, the system symmetrizes a lot. I can go back now to the critical temperature and we can see that the sizes of clusters grow above. Uh, we, we have large fluctuations in uh, magnetization. If this uh, is interpreted as uh, the uh, lattice gas, then changing temperature along zero magnetic field is the same as going along uh, the phase equilibrium between the solid or liquid phase be between the condensed phase and gas that's why we call it lattice uh, gas so let's go to high temperature again and now i'll do a process which is called quenching so i decrease uh, the temperature fast and we get what is called uh, spinodal decomposition. Uh, it was quite fast, you can see here uh, one uh, system which was quenched and quite fast. Uh, the screen was uh, copied print screen was done. Okay, so this is how this system works. And what is it good for? We have a very simple uh, model of reality. And for example, at the vicinity of the critical point, we believe that the behavior of all critical points in nature, and it can be a critical point uh, liquid vapor or it can be liquid liquid critical point they have the same universal behavior and if we are close enough to this critical point we have the same the so-called critical exponents that describe us how the system behaves uh, close to this critical point and we can study uh, this critical behavior using the Ising model and similar uh, models 
Another interesting system uh, defined in two dimension is the so-called uh, XY model. It is uh, another type of model that gives me a universal behavior. Now a different one than for eating. It's not a critical point. It's a special type of phase transitions that occurs uh, in two dimensions. And several years ago, there was a Nobel uh, Prize in Physics awarded for investigations of this type of uh, transition. I will show you simulation again. Uh, here I'll leave it running. And the Hamiltonian, the energy, is defined in such a way uh, that if uh, two spins, which are now real vectors with certain angle, are aligned, it has, they have the minimum energy. And uh, the energy is given by cosine. So I uh, let it uh, running, and it's a good idea, instead of showing vectors, which are not well visible, to show colors using the color wheel. Here what you can see is uh, essentially vacuum and there were two perturbations, two topological perturbations that can be interpreted as charges and these charges interact similarly as two-dimensional electrostatics. I can now increase temperature here again and decrease it again or I will do more so that I get Here we have a uh, lot of charges that attract each other and may disappear. And uh, there is a transition point between a system where I have a lot of charges, that is plasma, and a system that I don't have charges, or I have only uh, perturbations that appear and disappear. Lattice models are uh, popular in studies of polymers. Polymers are difficult to study by atomistic models because they have long chains and we need uh, long simulations to get uh, uh, good statistics and fast enough behavior. We often study uh, behavior of uh, coils of polymers uh, of polymeric systems on a lattice. Uh, the principle or uh, the um, trick done is a so-called random walk. That is, we start from a point and go on a lattice in certain direction. And we can distinguish several random walks. We can distinguish a random walks that can cross others go like this, we can have the so-called self-avoiding random walk, and we can have also a branch polymer. In the physics of polymeric systems, we study the behavior of a linear polymer, of course in three dimensions, in a solvent. It is a, a Flory theory quite a beautiful part on physics that essentially doesn't use any difficult mathematics, just uh, quite qualitative uh, reasoning. And it starts with this random walk. Uh, as regards the interaction of a polymer with a solvent, we distinguish uh, three basic cases. This polymer coil may have a tendency uh, to attract each other and to make something small, a small clump of polymer. Then we say that this polymer uh, is barely solvable or is in a bad solvent. We can uh, find that at a higher temperature, at an other uh, solvent, the polymer unwinds and makes a very large coil, some irregular structure that doesn't stick together. Then we say that the polymer is in a good solvent or in a limit in a thermal solvent. And in between we have something that we call a zeta solvent. 
okay if we have attraction between polymer beads and these attractions are strong enough we get a such a uh, coil that is badly solvable which is packed in opposite case where the beads repel each other we'll get polymer in a, a good solvent and there is a case in between where uh, attractive uh, and repulsive forces between polymer beads uh, are just in balance we all, always have uh, repulsive forces between polymer beads that cannot overlap but if, if we have enough attraction we can be at this state and uh, the shape and size of the polymer coil in a theta solvent is equivalent to such a random walk or also Brownian motion uh, which goes through a system and can cross each other it uh, corresponds to parts where there are two interacting beads if we have a polymer in a good solvent then we model this by the so-called self-avoiding random walk like here and again uh, we believe that the behavior of uh, polymer coils in uh, solvents in solution is universal and uh, the so-called uh, fractal dimension that we get from these models are those that uh, are valid in reality so these simple models in this case lattice models of polymer help us to understand real uh, linear polymers in a solution Thank you for your attention.